Let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. The signal oil program. The signal oil company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, lie or consequences. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Presently, I'll tell you of nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Before the Whistler tells you his story... I think you'd enjoy hearing about a signal gasoline station in San Francisco, California that's been run by the same owner, Frank Miley, for 20 years. When I tell you that many customers have been dealing with Frank Miley the full 20 years he's been serving San Francisco, you'll know he really has something to offer. And that something is longer car life. You see, Frank Miley, like all signal gasoline dealers, has made his customers' cars his life's business. He knows cars thoroughly, and the little tricks that keep them running smooth and long. When customers leave their cars with Frank Miley's signal station, they know every part, including the important unseen parts, is going to receive the thorough, conscientious service it needs. Because Frank Miley, like your neighborhood signal gasoline dealer, is in his own business and will be there year after year to back up his work. Well, that in a nutshell is why cars serviced by independent signal dealers with signal quality products actually do go farther. And it's why now, when your car has to last out the duration, is a mighty good time for you to get acquainted with your neighborhood signal gasoline dealer. And now, the Whistler. To the men who live by matching wits with the hardened criminals who deal in narcotics, the threat of violence is always present. But sometimes that violence has unexpected consequences. Witness the experience of Mark Hoskins, veteran detective of the narcotics detail. It was late one fall evening that Mark, with his fellow officer Red Andrews, was making his way down a blackened alley toward the hideout of two criminals prominent in the dope trade. The door right at the top. Hope we're not. But if we should need it, I spotted it this afternoon when I cased the setup. Anybody see you? No, nobody but the druggist. I just bought a package of cigarettes. Okay. Well, come on. Let's go get your promotion. What do you mean by that? We've been on this assignment a long time. If we crack it, you know the old man will give you a promotion. Why just me? Are you kidding? You're the fair-haired boy. I'm a dog around this department. The chief's had a knife in my back a long time. He likes an excuse to twist it. You'll get the promotion. You sound jealous, Mark. Maybe I am. Come on, let's go. Better stay in close to the wall. Right. Red, look out. Somebody under the stairs. You bet there's somebody under the stairs. Hey, behind you, Mark. There's another with a blackjack. Oh, I see you. What? Let's go, Joe. Let's I knew I'd catch up with you, Finley. Well, no, you haven't, Papa. Oh! Oh! oh, nuts. They got away, Mark. Mark! Hey, Mark. Mark, you all right? Hey, Mark. Oh, they really let you have one that time, didn't they? Hey! Huh? Hey, what's going on up there? I heard shooting. Come here. It's all right. We're police. Well, what's wrong? Look, did you see a couple of guys duck out of the alley? Yes, yes, just after the shooting. They jumped into a car and drove off. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Hey, what's wrong with this guy? They blackjacked him. Look. Yeah? Go into that drugstore on the corner. You can go through the back door. Call an ambulance while I take care of him. Police ambulance? Yeah. Well, who shall I tell him wants it? Red Andrews. Okay. <laughs> Where did you come from? The alley. I came in the back door. 
Look, there's a cop out there hurt. Looks like it may be fatal. And the other one asked me to call an ambulance. What were they doing? Well, after some crooks, I guess. Can I use your phone? Sure. Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Huh, let's see. Yeah, there's the police department number. I yeah, wonder how bad that guy's hurt. Hello, police department. Say, there, there's been an accident. Location, please. Behind Small's Drugstore, 18th and Hunter. Two of your men tangled with some crooks. Yeah? Well, one of your men is out cold, and the other asked me to call an ambulance. Uh, my name is Peters. What about the crooks? Oh, they got away, both of them. Our man badly hurt? Yes. The other one said his name was Red Andrews, asked me to hurry in here and phone. He was working over the one that was out. Okay, we'll get a car right over. Thanks. Goodbye. Say, did I hear another shot while I was in there? Sounded like it. Well, I'd better go see, I guess. I'd go with you, only I'm on, alone here. Can't leave my store unattended, you know. <laughs> Send an ambulance right away. Hey. Who, who are you? You you're the one that was knocked out. Those crooks. I gotta get and those him. crooks. Look, he's hurt now. I gotta get those crooks. Yeah, I'll... yeah. Now look, you just take it easy. An ambulance is coming. I'll I, I gotta take a look at this. this. Hey. Hey, this man isn't just hurt. He's dead. <laughs> to bring you down to the station, Peters, but you understand. You're the nearest thing we have to a witness. I understand. I I think I've told you everything I know. Yeah, there's just one thing I don't get. Red Andrews was shot. He must have been dead when you called for an ambulance. Mm, no. No, I don't think so. He's the one who asked me to call. Oh. It was the other guy who was out. Mm-hmm. Andrews was kneeling down over him. But, well, when I got back, Andrews was dead and... The other guy was up. He was walking around kind of like he was in a daze. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Well, we're not going to hold you, of course, but we'd like to be sure you stay in town. Oh, of course. Well, all right. That's all for now. I want to get over to the hospital and see Hoskins. You managed to butch another one, didn't you? Take the knife out of my back, Chief. We got a tough break, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red Andrews got such a tough break that it killed him. Couldn't you guys have been on your toes? They must have been tipped off. They were laying for us under the stairs. Yeah? Well, regardless of how it happened, I'm holding you responsible for catching the guys that did it. I don't like to have my men bumped off, especially men like Andrews. Do you think I'd have let it happen if I could have helped it? Uh, I don't know. Well, that's not the point, anyway. The point is, is after you were knocked out, somebody killed Red Andrews. Well, Breddy and Finley must have come back. Probably, but it's up to you to prove it and bring them in. Well, Mark, some rather startling developments took place while you were unconscious. You and Red Andrews exchanged positions in a most peculiar manner. And the chief's putting you on the spot to explain it. Well, now that you're out of the hospital, you better do some checking up. First thing will be to locate Beretti and Finley again. Better check your gun first, though. They're desperate characters, you know. Oh, how do you explain that, Mark? You don't remember firing your gun last night, do you? They knocked you out before you even drew your gun, and yet your gun has been fired. At least there's one round missing. And now, back at the scene of the crime, you found another clue. An empty shell from your gun. Some shells from Andrew's gun, too, but they were fired after you were knocked out. Though so your gun had been fired, and now you know where. At the spot where Red was shot. Does that suggest anything to you, Mark? No. No, it couldn't be. I didn't like him, but I wouldn't have... I couldn't have been that much out of my head. Could I? I've, I've got to find out more about this. Good morning. Good morning. Can I get something for you? Were you the druggist on duty here last night? Yes, it's hard to get help these days. I have to work night and day. Yeah, I, I understand a guy called an ambulance from here last night. Yes, that's right. Did he say anything to you? Just that there were a couple of officers in the alley and that one of them had been hurt. I see. 
How long was he in here? Oh, about four minutes, I guess. Did you see anyone else while he was phoning? Mm, no. No, I didn't. But see here, who are you? I'm the guy that was knocked out. Oh, well, you you seem to have recovered. Yeah, outside of a lump on the back of my head. Well, the fellow didn't tell me anything other than the report he made to the police. Okay. Thanks. Yes? Uh, is your name Peters? Yes. Uh, you're the guy who called the ambulance about that affair behind Small's drugstore last night, aren't you? That's right. Come in. Oh, thanks. They told me at the department you'd probably be willing to answer some questions. And, uh, who are you? Take a good look. Don't you recognize me? Uh, oh, yes. Yes, you're the one The that... one that was knocked out. Yeah. I believe you reported to the chief that Red Andrews was kneeling down working over me when you left to call the ambulance, is that right? Yes, yes, that's what I told him. And the report also states that as you entered the alley after hearing the shot, you saw two men run out of the alley, jump into a car, and drive off. Yes, that's what I saw. Good. Now listen carefully. Were you in the drugstore long enough for those men to drive around the block, enter the alley from the other end, kill Red Andrews, and make a getaway before you got back? Oh, let me see... I imagine it took less than five minutes, but, well, yes, I believe there would have been time for that. Thanks a lot, mister. I guess that just about answers my question. I've got a hunch that's exactly what happened. I beg your pardon, but I don't think so. Huh? Why not? Because when I left to call the ambulance, you were lying flat on your face across the alley. If they'd have driven back, they'd have run over you. Or if you'd been up and around... I think they'd have shot you, too. You are listening to The Whistler, brought to you by your friend, the Signal Oil Company, marketers of famous Signal Gasoline, your best buy today. Remember to let every go signal remind you, you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. Your theory of Finley and Beretti having come back and killed Red has been blasted. This is beginning to simmer down to far too few suspects, isn't it? From the way the evidence is pointing, you're going to be incapable of weighing it in an unbiased manner. It's placing too much suspicion on you. Of course, you're not ready to face an admission yet, not even to yourself. But if you won't admit killing Red, you'd better find out who did. You know that Red fired several shots after you were knocked out. But that doesn't mean that Finley and Beretti couldn't have fired some, too. Maybe they shot Red during the fight and it didn't kill him instantly. Maybe he had the bullet in him all the time he was working over you. It's worth investigating, Mark. The uh, coroner could help you there. Hello, Doc. Oh, hello, Hoskins. Glad to see you. Doc, can I speak to you for a minute? Certainly. Sit down. Thanks. Look, you did the autopsy on Red Andrews this morning, didn't you? Yes, yes. Terrible thing. You determined the cause of death? And that's right. He died of injuries sustained from a gunshot. Doc, were you able to tell from the nature of the wound how long Red lived after the shot was fired? Oh, yes. Definitely? Definitely. What would you say, Doc? Could he have lived ten minutes, five minutes? Well, if Red Andrews lived ten seconds after that shot was fired, it would have been a miracle. What? Yeah, he was shot through the heart. Close range. Died instantly. <laughs> Well, there goes another theory. Red couldn't have been shot by the crooks at the start of the fight. And they couldn't have driven back in the alley without running over you. But who else could have done it? Who else had the opportunity? Silly, isn't it, to suspect yourself? But the fact remains that Red Andrews was the fair-haired boy of the department. Everybody knows that. And the chief knows that you were jealous of his position because Red stood between you and promotion. Do you suppose it could have been possible that your subconscious resentment of Red could have been translated into irresponsible action while you were knocked out? Possibility or not, you better crack this thing before the chief gets such an idea or before he puts someone else on the case to start 
prying around. Oh, hello, Hoskins. Hi. Say, uh, did the lab stuff on Andrews come through you? Uh, yes, yes, I did the analysis. You handled the ballistics report, huh? Yes, a bullet was fired at close range from a thirty-eight service pistol. Oh, was, huh? Yes, probably by a gun that had been stolen from some officer. Probably. Did... Did you retrieve the bullet? Mm, yes. Mind if I have a look at it? Oh, sure. I have it right here. Ah. Here you are. Would it be all right if I borrowed it? Well, if the chief's assigned me to the case, I want to make a comparison, okay? Oh. Well. <clears throat> oh, I guess it's all right. Uh, if you'll be personally responsible for it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But uh, you'll be sure to take good care of it, all right. It'll be best to know for sure, won't it, Mark? Jumping to conclusion isn't good detection. You'll be perfectly safe down there in your basement. With that pillow muffling the gun, no one will hear the shot. Then you can dig the bullet out of that sawdust barrel and compare the rifling with the one that killed Andrews. Then you'll know, won't you, Mark? Well, now there can be no doubt. The riflings are the same. The bullet that killed Red Andrews was fired from your gun, Mark. Looks as though you'd solved the murder beyond a reasonable doubt. All the circumstances have pointed towards you all along. And now you've found the clinching clue. Maybe it would be best if you try to cover up what you know. Or is it too late? Does the chief know something, too? Could that be why he's sent for you? Hoskins, I don't understand it. Here we got a clear-cut case of first-degree murder. Motive, opportunity, corpus electi, everything. And yet you stammer around about the proof. Well? Well, it seems obvious who killed Red. Does it? Certainly. The crooks you were after. So bring him in. This is becoming a pretty mess, isn't it, Mark? You don't dare bring in Beretti and Finley. As long as they're suspected, suspicion will be removed from you. But if you bring them in, they'll prove that they didn't do it. And then there'll be only one suspect left. You, Mark, you. But the chief's going to put another man on the case soon if you don't turn up something. That bullet. You'd better do something about that before another detective starts snooping around. How about a switch? A bullet from a different gun instead of the one they dug out of Andrews. Maybe worth a try, Mark. Say, I... I brought the bullet back. Sorry I was so long. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, yes, the Andrews bullet. Yeah. Hope you haven't been worried about it. Oh. Oh, no, no, I wasn't worried about it. We made a set of microfilm pictures of the bullet when it first came in. Pictures of the right bullet. And now you've substituted another. That'll look mighty bad for you, Mark. You're getting in deeper and deeper, aren't you, Mark? First, your own deduction has stamped you as a criminal, guilty of manslaughter. Now your efforts to cover up are going to make it look like premeditated murder. You're wasting precious time now, Mark. Three days pass, and then there's something else. What does this mean, Mark? A note asking you to see Ben Tolan, one of the best detectives on the force. Uh, the sergeant gave me your message, Ben. Uh, oh, yes, Hopkins. Come in. I want to talk to you. You, uh, you know what's happened? No, I don't think I do. Well, a couple of days ago, the chief assignment of the Andrews case. Oh. I know what it'll mean to you to crack this case, and I didn't intend to get in your way. But it's a funny thing, Mark. I just did some routine checking in order to look busy. But I ran to a mighty strange thing. Oh? Yeah. I went to the lab, and they told me that you'd borrowed the bullet. Yes, I... I wanted to check it, I... Yeah, I know. And the trouble is, you got mixed up. The bullet you returned isn't the right one, Mark. I do... What do you mean? They made a microfilm of the right one, and the one you brought back doesn't fit. Doesn't it? No. Why did you switch it, Mark? What makes you think I switched it? 
Maybe I brought back the wrong bullet, but there's no... I know you too well to think that you'd return the wrong bullet by mistake, Mark. You're too good a detective for that. What are you driving at? Just this. The bullet gave me some other ideas, and I checked up on them too. So? I know who killed Red Andrews. You know? I think you know too. Only I decided that I'd let you crack the case if you could. Well, Mark, you still have a chance to do it. So Ben Tolan knows. He's found out about you, hasn't he, Mark? But it would seem that he's still trying to give you a chance to confess. He thinks it might be easier on you that way, doesn't he, Mark? But he's wrong. It won't be simply a matter of a few years for manslaughter. They'll hang you, Mark. And that's what you're thinking while pacing back and forth in your room. That's like you're trapped. The only way out doesn't make sense. Or does it? If Tolan is found dead, he can't tell. <laughs> yes. Then again, only you would know. Uh, that's a well-isolated house where Tolan lives, isn't it? Well, there he sits, Mark, completely unaware of the danger. Why don't you pull the trigger, Mark? You think it might be better to let Tolan know why he's going to die? You... you could take him by surprise. He hasn't a gun in sight. Tolan? Uh, what? Oh, you, Hoskins. Yeah. Surprised? Mark, what are you doing here? I've been trying to get a hold of you. What's the idea of the gun? I came to settle something with you, Tolan. What's the matter with you? You're acting screwy. You've been acting funny for days. Funny, have I? Well, maybe it's funny to you. You're not in my spot. Well, you wouldn't be in such a spot if you'd keep your head. Although I suppose the blow you received... Sure, sure. But I'm not taking a chance. I'm trying to prove that. What are you talking about? You're not turning in that evidence you collected, Mr. Tolan. I'm sorry, Mark. But I waited as long as I could. What do you mean? I left a complete report after work tonight. It'll be on the chief's desk tomorrow morning. So he beat you to it, Mark. No use to kill Tolan now. Then you'd be facing two rats. But wait. Yes. You're going to hang anyway. A man can only pay the supreme penalty once, Mark. You're thinking you might as well take Tolan with you. Pay him for his dirty snooping. You might have covered up if it hadn't have been for him, Mark. But he's exposed you. It's his fault. Mark, Mark, put down that gun. Don't be a fool. I'm not a fool. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, yes, I do. For the first time in days, I'm thinking straight. Now, for the first time, I see exactly what I have to do. You're crazy. Maybe, but my last chance is to try a getaway. I might make it, only you aren't going to be around to know. You had to turn in the dope on me, didn't you? All right, you're going to pay for it. What are you talking about? Just this. Maybe I did kill Red. But I didn't do it on purpose, and I'm not going to lay down and take the rap for it. You were hurt badly, weren't you? What do you mean? I don't know where you got the idea, but you're wrong. You didn't kill Red Andrews. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending of tonight's tale. Meantime, here are two tips for making your gas ration coupons go farther. One... Accelerate gradually. Never force your motor by stepping down hard on the gas pedal. You're sure to save precious gasoline in this way. And here's the second tip. Use the gasoline that's scientifically engineered to give you maximum miles per gallon. Signal's famous go-farther gasoline. For years, more and more Western drivers, who keep careful record of mileage, have been switching to Signal gasoline. Even today, although certain gasoline ingredients have gone to war, and no gasoline can give you the brilliant performance of pre-war Signal gasoline, the Signal Oil Company is still producing the finest gasoline that can be made today. And Signal still places the emphasis on miles. So the next time you trade one of your ration coupons for gasoline, remember, your best buy today is Signal Go Farther Gasoline. And the place to get it is your neighborhood signal gasoline dealer. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, Mark, 
You are about to kill the one man who knows you didn't kill Red Andrews. But how can this be? You're a good detective. And all the evidence pointed unquestionably towards you. How could Tolan have discovered something you overlooked? And yet he's told you that you didn't do it. What? I didn't kill Red? No. No, no, look, I'll tell you. There was a very obvious clue. You'd have caught it if you hadn't been so busy covering up for yourself. I saw it immediately. Go on, keep talking. You cornered these crooks in an alley behind a drugstore. And they were trafficking an illegal sale of drugs. Get it? Drugs, drugstore. Well, all I did was to go on from there. Well, where did that take you? To the druggist. He was the brains of a dope ring. Now, when you and Red traced the peddlers that close to his store, he figured that you had the dope on him, too. So when Peters went into the phone booth, the druggist slipped out the back door and into the alley. Red was bending down, facing him. The druggist went to help him. He bent down, jerked his gun from the holster, and he shot Red. He was back in the store by the time Peters came out of the phone booth. Yeah, he had my gun. Why didn't he kill me, too? Peters had told him that your injury looked fatal, that he didn't have time to check closely, but he figured that he'd taken care of both the cops who had anything on him, but he didn't. And if you haven't been fool enough to obliterate his fingerprints on your gun... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that'll cinch it. Yeah, tomorrow morning, you'll be in jail for the murder of Red Andrews. <laughs> Not you, Mark. Not you. Well, Mark, you almost convicted yourself of murder, didn't you? From now on, you'd better be careful whom you decide to kill. You almost shot Tolan. And Tolan is the one who saved your hide. From yourself, Mark. The Signal Oil Program will bring you another strange tale by The Whistler. The Signal Oil Program is broadcast for your entertainment by The Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal's famous Go Farther gasoline and motor oil, and by your neighborhood Signal Oil dealer, who is at your service daily to keep your car running for the duration. The Signal Oil Program, produced by George W. Allen, with story by Dwight Hauser, music by Wilbur Hatch, transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Bob Anderson speaking for your friend, the Signal Oil Company, and suggesting once again that you let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>